Coming to you today. Hope all is well in this um, this weekend. It's sunny where I am. God has blessed us with a with a gorgeous day. I hope you are safe and staying safe in these end times. Here on the Bread of Life Watchman, we look forward to the soon return of the King. Yes, that would be um, at our rapture, our blessed hope, Titus two thirteen, and we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians fifteen one through four, the gospel of Paul given to us at the church age. Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. That you're in need of a, of what Jesus did on that cross and how he died, which was shed his blood to forgive you for your sins. Yes, you'll come to repentance one time and you'll have eternal salvation. God, God bless you in making this decision. And uh, I pray for each and every one of you and the families that um, and friends that you're trying to give the message to. Do, do the gospel, do the work, give out the gospel of the good news. All right, so... Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'd love to have you. Thumbs up and hit the like button. So Acts 15, to me, um, a beautiful chapter. It's one of the best chapters in defining Christian doctrine, in my opinion, in regards to salvation. And it solves some problems. Um, does man have to do any work to be saved? And does man have to do any work to, to stay saved? And these were early Christians in this in this chapter in Acts, who who had to fix these basic biblical truths and matters at, at that time, and establish, you know, of course, doc, the doctrine of Paul shortly thereafter, when Paul is given the revelation from Jesus Christ, at First Corinthians fifteen one through four. All right, so we're looking at Acts chapter one, uh, fifteen chapter one, excuse me, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said. Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So, th so there was a debate, and where, when, therefore, Paul and Barnabas had had no small dissension. So they were arguing, and dis and, and and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other m of them should go to Jerusalem unto the apostles and the elders with this about this question. So they're going to go, as you can see here in verse two, they're going to go to Jerusalem. And they're going to try to figure out, you know, who's correct. And the apostles and elders are going to hear them out. And so, that, you know, that's exactly what they do. They do go there. Uh, and being brought on their way by the church, verse 3, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Verse 4, And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Verse 5, But then, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Interesting word, in my opinion, here. Because the Pharisees were the ones that put Jesus to death, which believed, saying that it was, needed, it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Of course, these were the same people that didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah. Why would they not want to tarry from the law? And that's what you see here. Verse 6, And the apostles and elders came together for the consideration of this matter. In my opinion, the church was raided by those that didn't, didn't believe that were, that were against the church. And I, I think you can clearly see that here. And so, Simon Peter... Um, what we're going to see next is is a lot of tr people try to say that you know Peter didn't share the message of Paul didn't have uh, he he had a works doctrine but if you look here in verses seven through eleven it shows otherwise verse seven and let's scroll down to here and when there had been much disputing Peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Okay, so we hear, you know, the Gentiles are now able to be saved. In verse 8, And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness. Again, God truly knows if you're saved, if you truly believe. Given them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. So they're coming to the realization that the Gentiles are to receive the Holy Ghost and be the same as the Jews in terms of salvation. Verse 9, And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So again, the, the body of Christ is starting to be realized that it, can, that it can include, you know, not just Jews, but, you know, it can also include the Gentiles here as, as we see that. 
Um, in verse 10, Now therefore we tempt you, God, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Verse 11, But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. All right, so really important here that, you know, Simon, this is a great change in Peter's sort of theology and his belief. And Barnabas and Paul, you know, at that time were the two great missionaries of the early church. You can see that in verse 2, 12, 22, and 25. They were venturing out, and they would continue to venture out. And James, the Lord's brother, is also mentioned here. Um you know, in this chapter as well, a little bit further down in chapter 12. Um, in, ver in verse, oh, excuse me, chapter 15, 15, verse 12, James, the brother of Jesus, makes his final decision. In verse 12, the Bible reads, Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Verse 13, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Verse 14, Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So Simon is Peter in verse, four, in verse 14. Verse 15, and to this agree the words of the prophet as it is written. Verse 16, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. All right, so what you see in verse 11 is the final doctrine statement of salvation of this age that was, was not given by Paul, it was given by Peter. That was verse 11, very important to know that. And um, it, it really just speaks against the Catholic Church's dog, dogmatic viewpoint on Peter, first of all, being the first pope, and, and you know, sort of the works doctrine that they believe Peter took on. No, you can see here in 15, um, Acts 15, 11, that you know, Peter did come to the realization, but we believe through the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Amen. All right. So definitely a, a beautiful thing. 15, uh, 14 here in Acts. Um, you know, Simon have declared God at the first did visit the Gentiles. So the visitation of God is shown here with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. And and this visitation is seen in other places other places in the Bible. Um, we'll look at it, Levit Levit Leviticus 18.25. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity there, thereof upon it, and the land itself vomit out her inhabitants. So this can be an example of visitation for wrath, as you can see here. Um, you can also, Genesis 21.1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken.